Ich meine, die Herausforderung ist, ähm, für neutral und objektiv über Themen zu sprechen, die dann aber doch relativ komplex sind. Natürlich, dafür brauchen wir eben Zeit. Und, äh, das viele Fachjargon oft mal am Spiel sind, das ist einfach komplex. Ähm, das heißt, da gibt es halt Limite, wie wir Sachen können vereinfachen können. Das ist auch vielleicht echt der Rolle von, von anderen Leuten, von, von Journalisten oder, oder von ich, von Science.lu, für das vielleicht äh, mehr zu vulgarisieren und äh, um mehr breite Publik ähm, weiterzugeben. So, data sonification is the art and the science of turning data into sound. Um, so, just as you might turn data into a visualization or a chart by turning it into the length of a bar, the color in a chart, or uh, the height of a line, uh, data sonification turns data into uh, sound, whether that's uh, using pitch or volume or mapping the data to the strength of an effect. One of the key advantages is that sound is very emotional. So when you listen to something, you have instantly an association with that sound. And it can be really used to um, uh, communicate data sets that are very emotional themselves, or where you want to communicate a key message, for example, around climate change or around environmental data, and to get people to act on that information, to act on that data. I think Data sonification is the process of turning um, data, numbers, into sound and, in our case, into music. And it can be really, really helpful when it comes to developing an emotional connection in the ears and the brain of the listener um, when it comes to topics that they might not necessarily otherwise care about or feel are um, too complicated, perhaps. It's all about distilling what is a can be a fairly complicated message down into something that is simple and easy and digestible and most importantly makes you feel something. So we have lots of challenges dealing with data. One of them is actually making them available for the public. So we're trying to make uh, chemical information available uh, so that other researchers can find it and then detect uh, problematic chemicals in the environment. And obviously the, uh, the problem is just dealing with the sheer number of chemicals we've got these days. So it's getting well over to the millions and uh, part of our research is designing methods to deal with these numbers of chemicals in a computationally sensible time. But how do we communicate the results that we see in a way that doesn't cause panic in the population but causes awareness uh, about the issues that we see. Um, we often get a lot of questions about whether the drinking water is safe to drink and yes the drinking water is still safe to drink. We, we uh, work a lot with the um, drinking water producers but at the same time raise awareness of the chemicals that are in use in the products and how can we uh, perhaps minimize the chemicals uh, in our daily exposure. Uh, so we have a lot of very interesting data issues to deal with uh, in the chemistry. Zuallererst muss ich überhaupt die Daten finden, die mir helfen, meine Geschichte zu erzählen, die Frage zu beantworten, die die User haben. Zweitens ähm, möchte ich die Daten trotzdem spannend erzählen. Ich möchte, dass die Leute an meinem immer Inhalt hängen bleiben. Ähm, das heißt, ich muss mit Farbe spielen, ähm, Icons dazu packen und so weiter. Also ich möchte auch Daten spannend erzählen. Ähm, Drittens wäre, die Daten auch ins Verhältnis zu setzen. Oft ist es nicht nur eine Zahl, die wichtig ist, sondern eine zweite, ähm, damit wir mit den Daten nicht die falsche Geschichte erzählen. Und viertens, transparent mit den Quellen sein, denn damit die Leute verstehen, woher die Informationen kommen. Okay, so it's multifaceted, but um, you can um play with things so for example i can take uh, a speech from from trump donald trump and uh find data about how much he's lied during the speech and sonify that that's one of the pieces i've done um you can look at the fingers on your hand and uh make a sonification based on that there's no limit to the amount of objects in you know, our, our world that you can 
look at and say, well, what's the meaning? What are the issues behind this object? And how do I want to represent them? You know, and of course you can represent them visually, but we're quite saturated with that at the moment, especially with things like big data and stuff. So, so sound is a way to, I suppose you could say slow down and consider things um, and then also try and represent uh, objects or data in a way that helps people understand the issues uh, behind the objects. Um, so um, climate change, for example, the pandemic, all of these things are very complex things. But when you um, transform them into sound, because sound has some uh, unique properties compared to uh, our, our s s sense of sight. Um, so sight's very interpreted, so we use it a lot for factual things. Um, but sound is um, much more to the limbic system. So uh, if you're like walking uh, at night, you know, down the street and you hear something, you know, snap behind you, you know, you don't think, oh, that's something that snapped behind me. There was a sound. I think I'll look around. You, you wheel around very fast, you know, that's because sound um, we react to it in a number of different ways, but it goes very deep, very fast. And there's a element of uh, honest truth about that, that we can't hide. And it's very useful for, uh, I suppose, having that in a, in a, in a, alongside um, something that's like hard fact, you know? So with the two combined, you have signification. And that's always interesting. <laughs>